Shalom and welcome to the Heartland Connection. This is Zach Waller, the Executive Director of Hyovel, your host, coming to you guys straight from the Heartland of Israel. Lots going on this week. We wrapped up the summer trip. Yeah, it was an amazing trip, a really, really awesome group of people, and um, just uh, such an amazing time of people connecting to the land and um, there's just nothing like being in the place where the Bible happened. <laughs> like, there's just nothing. Actually, we're going to talk a little bit about that in today's um, portion. But uh, yeah, it was really an amazing trip. A lot of uh, lives changed. We had a little time at the end of the trip where people were uh, just edifying each other as they've got to know each other on the trip and talking through some of the experience that they had. And just each person was just talking about how their lives were changed, that they experienced God in a new way and, and that um, that they're taking something home with them um, that is just so deep and powerful and perspective changed that, um, that each person just moved and a lot of tears and a lot of just joy and a lot of, um, yeah, just really incredible experience and, and being able to experience that with these volunteers and, and facilitate um, you know, God being able to, uh, you know, meet with these people here and experience this thing. It's just such an incredible, incredible experience. We also have um, the Daughters of Zion arriving, uh, as probably by the time you listen to this podcast, they'll have arrived here. So that's really exciting. We have these young ladies coming in um, for about three months here to bless and serve and to be part of the Harvest Logistics and helping in the kitchen and all these different things. And so we're really excited to welcome these ladies in and uh, to also, again, see them connect to the land and um, be part of this restoration redemption process that's happening right now. And yeah, harvest is just around the corner. We've we've uh, started with prep, more, even more preparations. Um, the tent is up. That's always like the sign that harvest is near. It's like when the big tent goes up, then it's like harvest season. So the tent is up and uh, doing some little things around the landscaping and stuff to get everything set and ready, everything cleaned and, and set for all of the uh, the harvesters to come in for the big groups to start arriving. So there's a lot of anticipation and excitement uh, building here at the uh, base here in Harbracha in Israel, in Samaria, uh, in anticipation for the harvesters, the foreigners that are coming in to be uh, vine dressers here in Samaria, just like Isaiah talked about. Um, so we're very excited about that. Um, also wanted to, to mention again, I talked about it quite a bit last week on the podcast, but I want to mention again that um, this Sunday... Uh, July 22nd is uh, the 9th of Av on the biblical calendar. It starts sundown on Saturday and then goes through Sunday. It's a day of mourning. It's a day of remembering um, the destruction of the first and second temples and many other tragedies that happened to the Jewish people. Um, so it's something that I strongly encourage you to take a look at. Um, don't let that day slip by. It's, it's, a, it's a fast day. The Jewish people around the world are fasting um, and remembering um, that God's presence is no longer here, uh, dwelling in the temple in Jerusalem, um, and that we long for the day when that returns um, and is here again. Uh, so it's a very, very interesting study, and, and there's so much to it. You know, there's so much within uh, Christianity that has kind of hijacked the whole idea of uh, the temple be- needing to be in Jerusalem, God's presence needing to be in that place. Um, but we see so many prophets that talk about, you know, this place, this temple, this literal physical place being a house of prayer for all nations, and that hasn't happened yet. All the nations have not gathered to pray and worship God in the t- temple in Jerusalem. So this is something that's coming. Uh, it's, there will be a time when the temple will be rebuilt, God's presence will be there, and all the nations will come up to Jerusalem. Uh, like it says many times in the prophets, all the nations will come and worship God, uh, and their prayers will be heard. Um, and there even talks about their sacrifices being accepted. And like there's a lot to this whole thing. So I just encourage you to study this out and to take this time particularly um, to read books. There's one called uh, A Temple in Flames, uh, I would recommend. Um, but but search around this, all kinds of information online um, and things. that This is something that we need to take a look at. We need to remember. We need to study and, um, and to be able to connect with these things um, that are that uh, help us understand what God's doing and why certain things have happened through history and what we're moving towards and what we need to be working towards today. 
So I'd strongly encourage you to go and check that out. So this week's tour portion, we are in Dvarim, which means uh, words, or it can also mean things. Um, we're starting off the book of Deuteronomy, which um, actually the, the book of Deuteronomy in Hebrew is actually called Dvarim. The whole book is called Dvarim. Um, I guess the uh, name Deuteronomy comes um, from the uh, Septuagint, I believe, where this speaking of the five books as the fifth book, um, the Torah, um, and Dvarim is just one of the first uh, words used in this in the book. Dvarim words or things. So we're starting in Deuteronomy chapter one, verse one, and going through chapter three, verse twenty-two. Um, and uh, I was reading a little bit of commentary on the book of Deuteronomy in general, in, in general as a whole, and it's really uh, quite fascinating how uh, things kind of shift in Deuteronomy. All the books prior to this, um, you know, we hear um, in the word of Hashem uh, came to Moshe, or or Hashem spoke to Moshe, saying, uh, you know, command all the children of Israel, speak to the children of Israel. Um, and here in Deuteronomy, it's more of uh, the words of Moshe. Moshe says, um, Hashem spoke to me, and this is what he said. Or Moshe just says to the children of Israel, you know. So it's more, um, we kind of transition from God speaking through Moshe to Moshe speaking to the people um, uh, the way he understood things, and more from his perspective, more from his thing. So it's, there's that slight difference I think is really important for us to see. And this is, this whole book of Deuteronomy is basically the children of Israel coming up right before entering the promised land. And this is like Moshe's final address, right? This is like his his last um, thing. He, he's already been told by God that we read about in last week's portion that after this battle that he was going to have, um, then after that, then he was going to be, um, you know, uh, he was going to pass away. He was going to be taken up into heaven. Um, and that that was it, that, that he was going to be finished. He was not going to be able to go into the land. Um, and so now Moshe knows they finished the battle, they're, that his time is coming to an end, and so now we have the book of Deuteronomy, um, what I've called in the past the uh, the world's longest sermon, right, where Moshe's like, okay, it's, it's my task as the leader of Israel to pump them up and get them um, encouraged and everything that they need equipped to go into the land of Israel. Um, so we uh, have um, in this week's portion we have uh, Moshe kind of recounting a few things. We have uh, him recounting when uh, the judges were appointed to rule over Israel, where um, uh, Moshe was uh, given advice um, from Jethro, right, to that that he was taking too much upon himself that he needed to appoint judges to help him um, provide leadership for the people. So that so Moshe took his advice, appointed judges. Um, we have the, the recounting of the story of the spies, and then we have Israel um, coming into um, Edom and Moab, these areas of Esau and Lot. And then we have the conquest of Sichon and Og, and then we have uh, Reuben and Gad asking for their inheritance. And it, uh, to me, just looking at this, I'm like, okay, Moshe is beginning his final address. Um so this should be like a super inspirational thing for the children of Israel to get pumped up to go into the land. Um, but then it starts off and it almost seems like, okay, wait a second, Moshe is just giving some sort of historical, you know, okay, this is what happened then, this is what happened next, and this is how it went. But then he like skips over a ton of things and you'd think that he would say, okay, we, we crossed through the Red Sea, we went to Mount Sinai, you know, the re rebellion of Korach, the, the ground opened up and, you know, like you'd think we would hear some really the major stuff. And these things that are chosen that Moshe starts off with here really aren't like what you would think of as the main things, right, that they got coming through the wilderness. So the question is, why these stories? And uh, I was look, listening to a, uh, a video that Aleph Beta, Rabbi David Foreman, with the, in um, Imu Shalev with the Persha experiment, um, they put out something that kind of answered this question. And I thought it was really good. He talked about how... Um, like why each of these things uh, kind of did go together and, and how in Moshe's final address here, um, he carried that weight of giving the children of Israel what they needed, equipping them with what they needed to go into the land. And so this wasn't just about a history lesson. It wasn't just about um, 
you know, inspiration. This is about being prepared, having what they need to go into the land. And Moshe knows these people. You know, he has, uh, you know, spent all this time with them in the wilderness. He knows their parents and the, the trials and stuff that they've gone through. And now they're right here again for the second time. And he knows these guys need some pretty, um, you know, some some strong edification, some some serious advice and some equipping and edification undergirding to be able to make this huge, huge, huge world changing, you know, climax of, of entering into the land. Um, so, um, so here we have Moshe beginning these, these, um, this, uh, address. And, um, if you look back through it, and this is what Aleph Beta talks about how, um, the uh, setting of judges when when he talks through these things, um, he kind of puts an interesting spin on it. It's not it's not even you know, if we read the the story of the account earlier in the Torah, it's uh, it's not like super detailed in the same way that it was before. The details almost seem a little bit different. You know, he's appointing the judges and um, he puts kind of a positive spin on this. He says the reason why God had us appointed judges, he doesn't he doesn't say well it's because you guys were so stiff necked and we needed we had so many problems to solve and we no he says we had to appoint judges because you guys were flourishing so much. There was an, so so many people, um, you know, flourishing and 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 and. Uh, so many people coming that we needed more judges. You know, God had prospered you guys as a people, and so it's just interesting the wording there. How Moshe takes this, you know, what he could have taken as a, you know, strong rebuke or something, and he kind of, he puts it in a way that's very encouraging to the people. Like you guys were growing so fast, God was blessing you so much that we had to appoint more judges um, to to care for you guys. Um, and then with the spies, you know, he's saying. Um, we, uh, you know, there was fear that came in, um, and this whole thing, that's what took you guys off. But, um, you know, take a look at Esau and Lot, you know, God gave them their inheritance and look, these guys, and it's interesting, the details that, that come out here is like, you know, this people group were there and then Esau came in and conquered them and then God gave them their inheritance. So again, it's like Moshe is saying, Hey guys, this is the way God works. He gives somebody an inheritance and then he enables them to defeat their enemies and take their inheritance. So this is, this, he can do the same for you guys. Um, so it starts to make a little bit more sense when you're seeing this as Moshe is like equipping them to go into the land. And then we have him recounting Sihon and Og, these like miraculous victory over Israel's enemies. And then speeds, like we just read about Reuben and Gad last portion, right? So he's like speeding all the way to the end and saying, and then you guys took your inheritance. So basically we have, you know, leadership being appointed because they had become so numerous. And then Moshe addresses fear and says, you shouldn't be afraid. Look at Esau and Lot. God gave them their inheritance. He's going to give you inheritance. And see, it's exactly what happened with Sihon and Og. Not a man uh, perished in the battle. You guys were miraculously victorious over your enemies. And then Reuven and Gad, see, they were able to move right in and begin taking their inheritance. Um, so he's like giving this uh, this pep talk, this you know this thing to the children of Israel to build their faith, to give them what they need in order to enter in uh, to the land. Um, so, you know, as, as I was listening to that teaching from Aleph Beta, I thought, okay, so that's, that's really, I think good. And it makes a lot more sense there. And then I just thought, okay, so for us today, um, you know, where are we now and where are we going and who's leading the way and what message do we need to hear that will equip us to make it successfully? How are we going to make it through what God has for us today? And do it successfully, and 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 be able to have peace and joy in that journey. Um, and as I was pondering that, I thought, you know, I I, I see in today's world, I see that the, the knowledge of God is spreading throughout the earth, and many people are are burning with this desire to just love God and to serve Him in righteousness. Um, you know, the whole Hebrew roots movement, or whatever. There's so many different names, and some it's such a broad term now. But but this whole thing, you know, there's not a specific leader that was like, "Hey, this is the way it should be." It's like God's the like the knowledge of God is just covering the earth, like waters cover the sea. Right? Read that in Isaiah. Um, but it's like people are just becoming passionate with their desire to love God and to serve Him in righteousness, you know, to follow His commandments, to follow His ways. Um, and um, so this is something that I see that is like what that's happening right now on the earth. You know, as we travel around different places, even in New Zealand and Australia and Sweden and Norway and South Africa and all these places throughout the world and Europe, um, 
we see the same thing happening, like the same awakening that, that God, the knowledge of God spreading, the people being hungry to dig into the Word of God and to study it and to, and to find God in, in that way. So I see that happening. I also see um, God restoring Israel. And after 2,000 years of desolation, the land and people of Israel are beginning to flourish. It's, it's such a phenomenon. Like, it just it hasn't ever happened in the history of the world that a country would would uh, you know that a people group would leave a country and that the land would go desolate and then they would return and then it would flourish again with the same indigenous people group like it's just it's it's crazy it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense naturally but it's obvious and that's what makes it obvious that God is bringing about this restoration process and so for us um, you know Christians us you know believers in Yeshua. As the Messiah, um, you know whatever whatever you call yourself in that category, um, I see that for us um, in our in our relationship with Israel, uh, we need encouragement with those same five things that Moshe is giving as encouragement to the children of Israel. I see that there's a huge need for righteous leadership to come up, right? Because there's this there's this knowledge of God that's spreading throughout all the world. People are awakening to that. Um, and, and longing for righteousness, um, but there's such a um, lack of trust in leaders because you know maybe um, you know you were in a church or something where all of a sudden the leadership um, you know was leading you in a way that you found out was you know so they had some pagan stuff in it or whatever, and you went to your pastor and said, hey, what about this stuff? And he was just like, oh, you know that doesn't really matter, or blew it off. However, way. And then, and then you're offended at the leadership, right? Oh, I'm not trusting any man anymore. I'm just going to follow what I read in the Bible and what God shows me. Um, and in, in some ways, that's that's been so beautiful, like I was talking about before, how God's awakening people to study and to seek after him with all their hearts. Um, and so now, but now we're at a point where we have all these people who are seeking God and, and basically... Um, doing what's right in their own eyes, right? We have so many people who are saying, no, I have the truth and, it, and this is what I studied in the Bible and this is the way it should be. And you know, then we have all these things that come up with calendar, with um, how to say the name, if you should say the name, and then what is kosher and what is, you know, how do you interpret this scripture and that passage and, and should we be doing this or that or how does this work? And um, unfortunately, it's caused a lot of division, right? Because um, people are so passionate about what they have. And I think um, now God is restoring um, and, and raising up righteous leadership who can lead in love, who can um, undergird people and help people come together. Because pe- we, uh, you know, it's, it's so obvious to me as, as a leader in, within High Yovel, the the power of unity of people coming together to work together uh, to to come together with a common purpose and goals uh, to accomplish something together we you know as individuals we have gifts that God's given us um, but we don't function very well without gifts that God's given other people when we bring those gifts together that's when we're able to be uh, fully functional in what God's given us by working together. Somebody that's good at administration, somebody that's good with, um, you know, with leadership, somebody that's good with all these different pieces, and then they come together, and that's when we can be productive. On our own little island, you know, we're we're not uh, we're not very effective. Um, and I think God is raising up righteous leaders, and I think it's something we need to really pray for and ask God to do and uh, to move us in that way. That that. Um, and these leaders, you know, will will lead people away from the replacement theology and anti-Semitism, and will refocus on Jerusalem and the miraculous restoration that's happening right now in the land of Israel. I see this is so critical um, for for us, and then, so that's what I see this kind of you know Moshe's first thing: set judges, you know, connecting that with these righteous leaders that God will raise up to help people walk in a good way. And the second thing that uh, Moshe talks about is the spies and how fear crept in and, and, and destroyed the faith of the people of Israel. And I think that's another huge thing that we need to overcome. Uh, many people don't come to Israel because they're afraid. And if you just look at the stats for the amount of Christian tourists that go to Rome compared to who come to Israel, I uh, just looked it up on Wikipedia, just did a quick search. It says on Wikipedia that 7 to 10 million tourists go to Rome every year. 7 to 10 million tourists a year. And Wikipedia says that 3.5 come to Israel. So, you know, that's like half to a third of the amount of Christians 
come to Israel as go to Rome. Okay, so, and why is that? I think it's a lot, mainly because of fear. People hear all this stuff on the media and on the news and the terrorism and all these things, and they're just like, oh, I don't know if that's, you know, if that's, if that's okay, if we can do that or not, or, you know, oh, let's just go to Europe or let's go to a different place. Um, and of that three, three and a half million that come to Israel, you know, it's only a couple percent, you know, one or two percent of that that actually make it into Judea and Samaria, uh, to the heartland of Israel, to the, to the biblical heartland. Um, so I think we need to overcome fear. We need to acknowledge the miraculous rebirth of Israel in 1948 and then 67, these things. And that's, that's the next step that, that God gave here. You know, Esau and Lot, you know, and Sihon and Og, there's this miraculous, you know, these wars that took place that see, God will fight for you. He will deliver you from your enemy. And so I think we, it's very uh, imperative. It's important for us to go back and study these things that happened so we can understand the miracles that God did. Just like Moshe retelling these stories, we need to go back and hear those stories um, so that it will build our faith and we can overcome fear. Uh, so I strongly encourage you to study those things out. Get books, read them about what happened in 1948, what happened in 67. Um because I think it's super important for us to know what happened and to be able to support the Jewish people as they reclaim their inheritance. And that's what we finish up with, right? With uh, Reuben and Gad, we have them taking their inheritance. And so we need to support Israel and reclaiming their inheritance. And, th- and of course, this certainly includes Judea and Samaria, the heartland of Israel, the main place where the enemy is targeting, trying to rip away from Israel. Um, this is the land that is uh, the heartland. It's the main place, the main place. Uh, part of the inheritance of the people of Israel. And so we need to support the Jewish people as they claim their inheritance. So these five things, I was just like, wow, this so much applies to where we're at today, what we need to focus on. And, I, and you know, within Hayuvel, our volunteer programs here in Israel, uh, you know, and, and the things that we do in the States are all developed around these very things, right? We're trying to help uh, raise up righteous leadership to equip leaders all over the world with what they need um, to to uh, serve their congregations, serve their groups, whatever it is, whatever kind of leadership position it is, to to serve their community in righteousness, to to grow them up, to help them overcome uh, these theological errors that have plagued Christianity for so many years, um, and also. Uh, um, we're trying to help people overcome the fear. We're, you know, we send out the Joshua and Caleb reports. We tell people, hey, look, all the horrible things you hear about are just the enemy trying to distract you from, from being invited by God to come and experience these things. Listen to these miraculous stories of these pioneers that come in and have settled the land of Israel who have you know, given their lives to, uh, to follow what they feel is God's calling on their lives to come in and and um, bring about the settling of the land, the the um, building of the land of Israel, just like the Bible talks about what happened. Um, and so I think it's so important for us to be able to uh, communicate that message, and that's what we're all about here in Hollyville is, is giving people that message. Come and experience it, um, and, and and you know. Ask God to help you overcome your fear. L- study the things that have happened recently, and that will help you to overcome these things. Um, and you know, serving serving Israel, helping support the Jewish people taking their inheritance and and reclaiming this land, and and looking forward to the time when when all of Israel is uh, here in the land, and the temple is rebuilt, where God's presence comes and returns to Zion, where the law goes forth out of Zion, the word of God from Jerusalem. Um, like this is so huge, and this is what us as Hayavel are trying to do here in the land is to equip people with with these very things in order for people to understand and be a part of what God's doing today, to prepare people, just like Moshe giving this speech of people going into the promised land to prepare um, the Christian world to be able to come into the promised land and and be a support to the people in the land of Israel. So I encourage you guys, if you haven't been to Israel, you need to come. If you haven't been on one of our trips here and, and got your hands dirty in the soil of Israel, it will change your life. Please consider coming and having that experience. It will change your life forever. Thank you guys so much for listening. Shabbat Shalom from the beautiful, exceedingly good land of Israel. Restoration.